and a very warm welcome to our service on this second Sunday of Lent. Um, this morning we're going to be following the service of morning prayer for Sundays. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. And now we're going to listen to some music. this is the part of the service where we remember the things that we need to ask for God's forgiveness. St John wrote, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. 
We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore in us his image to pray to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy and in our song will we praise our God. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance as we rejoice in the gift of your saving help. Sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we listen now to some music.
I'm reading from Romans chapter 4, verse 13 to the end. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead, and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second Bible reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 31, to the end of the chapter. Jesus predicts his death immediately after the disciples have recognised him as the Messiah. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and, after three days, rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we've heard the Gospel reading. Do you like a good mystery? I love one, whether it's in a film or a TV series or... In a book, one gets drawn into the story and then there are all sorts of twists and turns. At times you, one thinks one knows what's going on and it's not until the very end when perhaps new information comes out that one realises what has really uh, been happening and what the story is really about. And along the way it's an exciting journey 
and uh, at times uh, one feels more confident than others of knowing what is happening. But very often there are points when one doesn't understand. And that's where we've got to in the mystery of Jesus. Uh, one way of looking at Mark's Gospel is that it is uh, St Peter talking in his older age to John Mark, who was a young man at the time of Jesus and makes a cameo appearance, a bit like Alfred Hitchcock in his films, as the young man who is wearing a robe and when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, the soldiers grabbed his robe and he ran off naked. So John Mark, who, whose first language was Aramaic, like Peter, writing in Greek for a larger audience, pretty simple Greek, saying again and again, he says, and then, or straight away. And uh, he wants to put across the story that Peter is telling him. And Peter is telling the mystery story that he has lived through, of finding out about Jesus, of thinking they knew what was going on as they saw him do miracles, heal people and so on. They began to believe that he was the Messiah, the special one promised by God who would bring uh, God's kingdom, um, his reign on earth. And they had all sorts of expectations, they had all sorts of ideas as to what that would mean, throwing out the Romans, uh, bringing in Israel as a great and top nation again. And they have just, in the story as we get to it about the middle of Mark's Gospel, they have just said to Jesus that they recognise that he is the special one, the Messiah, the anointed king. And Jesus has commended them for doing so. And then there is a big twist. He starts, as we've heard today, to talk of going to Jerusalem and being arrested by the religious leaders. The people that should be flocking round him were going to arrest him and they were going to beat him and kill him. And he speaks that of another twist that's coming, that he will rise again after three days. You can imagine they were a bit bemused. This was not what they were expecting. And many mystery stories do that to us. Uh, and we get uh, caught out by turns in the plot. This is what happened to the disciples. And they were so bemused that one of their leaders, Peter, said to Jesus, you can't do this. This is not part of the story. This is not the way the narrative is supposed to go. And Jesus rebuked him. He actually called him Satan, the enemy. You're getting in the way of the real story that needs to be told. And he then began to tell them that against perhaps their expectations that they were going to be following a great leader and would get great glory and perhaps even riches, he says, well, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to say no to yourself. You're going to have to pick up your cross and follow me. And in those days, if you saw someone taking a cross, a Roman cross, you were going on a one-way journey to death. Wow, what a challenge. Where are we in our story? What do we think life is about? Covid and all the changes that it's brought about have really has really shocked us. A um, famous German writer, Siegfried Lenz, wrote, all security is deceptive. The things that seem to sustain us can be destroyed in a single instant. And that's rather what's happened this year. Our jobs, finances, routines, even our loved ones have been taken from us tragically. Our world has been turned on its head. Everything for a moment seemed lost and it's been very stressful for everybody. But we now are hearing of a possibility of another twist, 
of a new start. Lockdown being lifted because a vaccine has come in that can defeat this terrible virus and help us through. It won't be easy, but there's new hope. And that's very like the story of Jesus. He calls us to follow him, even through the hard times. But, as in his own story, there is hope. There is resurrection. Death is not the end. And here is someone we can trust, even for the dark times, even for the times when everything seems out of our control. And I've found great comfort from faith in Jesus that through this time of COVID. I know many people who have. And I do commend to you, if you're looking into Jesus, the series on YouTube called The Chosen. You can watch it for free. They've done a first series of eight episodes about Jesus and this mystery that his first disciples got caught up in and that we too can still be caught up in. May God bless us as we follow Jesus and are not ashamed of this great and ancient story but actually hold on to it because it is true at its heart. It echoes reality and we can have confidence in it. May God bless us and help us through. Amen. Thank you, Jonathan, for those words to us. And now we together declare our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we listen to some music.
And now we come to our time of prayer. To the response, you speak what is true. Please will you respond and the truth can set us free. You speak what is truth and the truth can set us free. Let us pray to our God in faith, knowing that he understands what is best for us. Heavenly Father, increase our faith that everyone in your church may be ready to trust you and move forward with you wherever you lead us. You speak what is true and the truth can set us free. Heavenly Father, give to all leaders and their advisers the courage to be honest, the will to be just, and the greatness to be humble, and the openness to learn. You speak what is true, and the truth can set us free. Heavenly Father, at the door of each home place your welcome in rooms of each home your love in the eyes of each person your truth and in all our companionship your own you speak what is true and the truth can set us free heavenly father Give comfort and healing to all those who are ill. Peace to the anxious. Reassurance to the afraid. That we may know your love for us through both the good and the agonizing times. You speak what is true and the truth can set us free. Heavenly Father, may the dying be prepared to meet you and the souls of those who have died in faith live forever in the joy of your presence. And Father, surround those members, those people who have lost members of their families. We pray for them that you will continue to surround them with your peace and your help at this difficult time. You speak what is true and the truth can set us free. Heavenly Father, give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy, knowing that you are always there beside us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the power and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in his way, may we come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now bringing all our prayers together, we say together the Lord's Prayer using the modern words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now we listen to some music.
So as we come to the end of this time together and as we go out into a new week, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day and always. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.